It was a normal day in Maid Hatter. Before Coco Pomel had opened the boutique, she decided to do some inventory. And she was the first also to wait until the, her assistants start. When the, when the first assistants had arrived during while well, she was doing her inventory, they opened the store. And soon, within an hour, there were customers in the store. And the store was busy almost the entire afternoon. Even from noon to afternoon before they were going to close the store for the day, it was a busy day. Because today, the store had got, got used the most recent designs from Rarity. And Coco was feeling very much optimistic. She felt proud to be part of this new brand of stores that Rarity had opened. And she had even been promoted by Rarity to be the manager at the store. But even though being part of a very busy shop uh, store in Maidhaddon, there was something in her life that was missing. She had recently broken up with for her boyfriend. They had only been dating for about six months when she found out that he had been cheating on her the entire time. He was even engaged with another mayor for about another, another for about a year. And for the past of the half of the time when he pretended he had been a single, he had been dating Coco Pomel behind his other mare's back. But when Coco find out found out about this from another an assistant that she saw her boyfriend with another mare. At first her assistant thought maybe there was just maybe a friend or something about that. But when he, when she saw that they were kissing, the assistant couldn't believe it. But when she told Coco right the next day at work, Coco could not believe it at first. Because he would not much she didn't believe that her staff would lie to her. So but she wanted to see that caught him in action himself herself. So for the next couple of days when she find out where he's supposed to be with, after that she had been hired a friend of hers to spy on him. And one day when he, when Coco was at work, this friend of hers came back to the store informing her where her boyfriend is and that he is with another mayor at the restaurant nearby. And it turns out that it was the same mayor which her assistant had seen before. And her friend had even said that he has seen the same mayor with her boyfriend for the past two days when he was spying on them. And Coco could not have believed it. First, there was her assistant telling this, and now a close friend of hers. And now she knows it is the truth, but she had to call him in action. So, she decided to tell her assistant that she takes an early break. And her friends told the location of the restaurant. And turns out it was only a few minutes of walk by from the rest from the store. So when she went there, she went inside and looked around and saw him further in the corner of the, of the restaurant. He didn't even pay attention, or he didn't even notice when she walked up to him. When he saw her, he was pale as a ghost. And now he has something, something to explain. But normally, when Coco Pomela hears like stories like this, often the other partner screams, or at least yelling. But Coco actually walked up casually, walked up to her boyfriend. But she didn't yell or didn't seem angry. But she were really upset. But she pretended like it's nothing like that. And it was everything was normal. She asked him if they could talk for a moment. 
and then suddenly this mayor asks who he is, she is. But before even her boyfriend could say anything, she interrupted and said, I am his girlfriend for the past six months. And excuse me, I want to talk to my boyfriend. And this mayor lost her freaking mind. Your girlfriend? But you have been my fiancé for the past year. And you have been cheating on me for the past six months behind my back? And we were supposed to be married at the end of the summer. And that when he had finally been cornered for the final time. He tried to make some excuses, but either Coco or this fiancé could not even explain. They didn't believe any of the excuses. He tried to say that he felt that their relationship wasn't had this fire anymore. And he wanted to see if it was good, if he could bring that bigger spark back into the relationship by just being with some other bear for only a short time. And he said it was some sort of experiment. And that when Coco lost it. You calling our ex our relationship as just an experiment to make your life with her with more sparkly? How dare you? And then she took a glass and threw it on the water in his face and said, you don't never be around me anymore, and never try to talk to me, and never come to my store, for you are now banned for life. And I don't believe really want to see you anymore. And then he and then Coco turns to her fiance and said, "I'm sorry for this. This this loser made me believe everything." But this fiancé, she was firstly angry, but now she looked at Coco and said, Don't worry, I will never see him again, again either, because this engagement is off. And also, you can take your stuff and leave. And that was the last time Coco or the fiancé or ex-fiancé saw this particular stallion. Because the last time, when Coco heard, this stallion lost his work, lost his place to live, so he had to stay far away from, from Manhattan. Since he had not afford to pay his rent, he lived now somewhere in the south, as a farmer or like something what he, what he heard. And Coco, she was devastated. She had actually believed this stallion was the true love of her life. She had been thinking, even daydream about them together as married, having a family together, but now her daydreams, her perfect life had been ruined. Because of this stallion's experiment with her as a part of his experiment. And when Rarity found out about was told about this from Solomon Coco's assistant, she was equally devastated. Because when she heard about that Coco had started dating this Italian, and they had even been introduced to each other, she was really excited to know that her friend had finally found some pony to be with, but now learning the truth behind the truth doll about this Italian's true attention. She was furious, but she told Coco that she will find her love, even if it takes much more time to do it. But Coco said that she didn't want to be bothered by dating anymore. Now she decided to focus on her work and no dating. Even though there were only a few weeks after when Coco just broken up with her, her ex-boyfriend, she still could not have moved on from this. It happened during the time when they were at this, when she was at the store, she often stood, stayed in her office. She only came out when one assistant needed some help or something like that. She always went to the office, run away, and stayed there the entire day. She normally didn't, normally cases, she would always be in the store helping around customers or staff. 
But since her, after her boyfriend cheated on her, she decided that she didn't want to be around much punished anymore. So she kept herself in her office. But one day, when the staff arrived at the store, it was closed. So it turns out Coco had never even arrived. But they didn't bother much to figure out because they knew that maybe she would be late. It happened before that she was late maybe once or twice in a week. Due to some to her traffic or that she woke up late or something. But so they didn't didn't tense an attendant to wait for her. But as the workday passed, she still had even arrived. So so the one of the assistant went to Coco's Pramel's apartment that wasn't far away from the store. But when she came there, she didn't open. She then asked one of the neighbors, and it turns out Coco didn't actually come home yesterday. She came home and left right almost immediately afterwards. She didn't tell the neighbors where she was going, or she didn't even tell the landlord where she was going. Only that she was going away for only for a few days. She only had to pack only a suitcase with her. So they decided to maybe just run the store as normally. They supposed to be waiting for that she would return. So after two days, she hadn't even returned. But after the, on the fifth day, the assistant went back to her apartment. But Coco had never has even returned yet. And the, na- the neighbors still hadn't even heard anything about her. And now they're getting worried. Because normally she didn't stay away from work that long. And especially now, when this fashion show is coming up soon in Manhattan, and they all have been working daily basis to make sure that their this new designs they had was ready. And since normally Coco helps around most most of the work, but now she has been missing for almost a week. So one of the assistants decided to go to Pony to ask Rarity if she had heard or perhaps even seen her, or perhaps even she was in Pony. But Rarity, she was equally shocked. She had no idea where Coco Pomel were. She had even heard her from more than, more than a week. So they went to Maid to Candlelot to see. But nowhere else. So they decided to wait if they heard something. But of course the assistant had to return back to, to Maid Had the, almost the next day though. Because to the for the show that we are upcoming show. But the next morning they find Coca Pumel in the office. She had returned middle of the night. And of course they had no idea what she had been. She said that she had only been away and that she needed some time to be alone. And they ex- asked for one reason. But one of them assistant then remembers about her ex-boyfriend's doing. And, and that was the only answer that she could give him. And Coco said, Yes, that's the reason I left for a few, for a few days. And now they decided to not ask more about it because they didn't want to bring her much sorrow in her life though. And they decide to main focus on the upcoming fashion show and animals. After about a few weeks, after the fashion show was over, things went back to normal at the store. Coco Pomelo went to work every day as normal. And first at further though that she still remained in her office. But after some time, she started to work around in among the other staff as normal. Even that she seems to be happy, smiling for customers, always chatting with them, but she was deep down in her heart, sorrow. She was heartbroken. Everything was seems to be almost boring for her life. But one day. A stallion walked into the store when she was at the when she was at the front desk. And it turns out when she saw this stallion, 
she lighted up. It was an old friend of hers by the name Snowy Blue. Snowy Blue and Coco had been knowing each other for many years. They literally grew up with each other. They were like best friends. But since they haven't even seen each other for a long time, for about ten years earlier, he had actually been moving from Manhattan to another town further north. He was working there as a carpenter. But after some while, he decided to move back to Manhattan because he wanted to open his own store, which he did. And he was just looking around for maybe something. He hasn't been he hasn't been much back in Manhattan after he moved back there. So when he walked around in the, in the area. He saw the store has never seen before, so he decided to walk in to see if there was maybe something interesting. When he saw Coco Pomel, he was very surprised because the last time when he heard about Coco, that she was an assistant to another fashion designer by the name Suri Polomir, but now he was very surprised to see her. So he walked up to her. They both civilly greeted to see each other. Then he asked her if the store was serious, but she said no, it isn't. It's a rarity store, and she is a manager in it. And he was really surprised that she has stopped working for Suri and now working for Rarity. And of course, she asked him if he was hungry, and he said yes. And he asked why. Then he said that maybe they can go grab something to eat, and she would explain. Things will happen recently, and he said, "Okay." So they went to a cafe just a short distance from the store. There, he started to hear about all things that happened for the past ten years for about her. First, that she started working for a story, and how she'd been really treating about her, and how she started working for Rarity after she realized how much bad treating from Suri she had been. And now she ends in manager at one of the rarities, rarities store in in Manhattan, and he was really surprised at how much she had been going through and how much great she had been doing. But then the next part telling about her ex boyfriend. First, he and but her heard about him that he treated her so well, he was happy for her. But after the mention what he did, he just. His face was just blank, and almost only a second later, furious. He never heard of any pony even treating her like that, and and all he could say he says, "I'm glad. If I was seeing him, I would have kicked his blank plot away outside town and demanded him never to see you again." That made her chuckle. That, <laughs> yeah, I know that you would do that. I know that you're always protecting me from bad guys, or at least from any harm, and I'm grateful that. And that made his smile. And said, "Yeah, I mean, you are her beautiful mirror. You deserve someone to be with, like some gentle, kind, but mostly truthful, and also most of all, faithful." And for a reason, Coco couldn't stop smiling when he said that. But then he asked her, "Would you maybe, I don't know, like to go out maybe for some time for dinner, movies?" Dinner was also fine. And then he actually had asked her if she would like to go to his place maybe on Friday to eat for homemade dinner, and she smiled and said yes. They small talked a bit more before he had to go back to his work. For the next couple of days, Coco felt very excited. She was going to have a date with her best friend, but but then, no way. It was her best friend. How would they meet them together? Would it mean that he has feelings towards her, or is it just some friendly date? She was very puzzled for what kind of date this could have been, so she asked some of her staff assistants what they could figure out about what this meant. 
at least according to them, it seems to be that he was asking her out on a romantic date. But the others were very much couldn't even decide if this was just a friendly date or just a romantic date. They were were not much just an argument about this. They couldn't just couldn't even figure out which part of it would, could be true. As the day was closing by to Friday, she getting more excited but at the same time also nervous. And then on the Friday, she would have been standing outside his apartment. Before she was about to knock, she maybe felt maybe that she didn't sc- she maybe shouldn't stay there. Maybe just telling him that maybe that they could have just do something else. She didn't know if she had feelings towards him because she has never been had any romantic feelings towards her best friend who was as long as she remembers. But when she knocked the door, he smiled and greeted her inside, and it turns out he had been cooking pasta with hay balls, one of her best favorite dishes. And of course, she could not have a really great time with them. She listened to all his stories of the past 10 years on his work and now his own business and everything. And she could never have been happy for him. Even though the most of the time they had been together. Even after dinner, he even had offered her some ice cream for dessert. They sat there, small talk, and just having a good time together. And then she asked him if this date were a friendly date or a romantic one. She couldn't even figure out if it was a romantic one or not, is it? And he chuckled and said, <laughs> Yeah, I can understand that. And yes, this is actually a romantic date. We see, for you see, five years before I moved, I started having feelings towards you, but I was too scared to be telling you. I know that you probably wouldn't like me the same way back, and, and, but that was not the reason I moved, no. It just, I felt this would, would have been awkward, is, I don't know how this would affect our friendship, if it would be too awkward to even be around each other. So after a time, I thought maybe these feelings would fade away over time, but it didn't. It only gets stronger for each single day for the past 10 years. I know I should have probably been mentioned about this earlier, or perhaps even been visit you from time to time. But the work kept me occupied a lot, and things t- turned out that I... I they had actually met us a mayor in the, the town I lived, but we didn't work out so well. We only were dating for about several few months until we decided to broke up. Weren't going any much further than that. And Coco, she had no idea about that about this. And she smiled and blushed a lot when he asked her, Would you maybe like to go out? For another time, perhaps the movies or something, and she just nodded and said yes. So for the next couple of days afterwards, they decided to maybe see each other a little bit more often. They talked mostly about old friendship memories, and but slowly, for each single day we're meeting, Coco started to have some feelings towards him, and she realized it. She realized it now, how much. He actually had meant so much to her. Me more than that, and she's a friend. More than that. And she realized that now. And after about a couple of days, they went on the movies and they saw, decided to see this comedy movie, but in which both of them actually liked. And then, there was then they decided to try to make it, try to date and see be a couple, and see if it works between them. Because they didn't want to be rushing into a much 
deeper relationship just to see if they will have some spark between them. And after about a couple of weeks, they had realized how strong their feelings were towards each other. And that was the start of their new serious relationship. Coco's, from Coco's family was just happy for her. And Snowy Blue's family, they were also excited but for about him. But then, after almost been dating for two months, Coco just started getting some letters. And the first was to some romantic letters and even flowers outside her apartment. She thought maybe there was a secret gift and letters from Snowy Blue. And she didn't even, didn't even bring these things up to him, begging him. She maybe decided maybe do that for a date later on. But this suddenly the letters stopped. But the gift still was still coming. And they were shifting from sweets like chocolate, roses, and perhaps even some jewelry, mostly like necklace. But the most of all was chocolate or a few roses or daisy daisies. But after a while though, they even also stopped. But they returned only about a short time later. But then, even when Coco was walking to work, the first few days after that, she didn't feel she didn't feel much in any strange. But something was feeling off. She felt like she was being watched. She always turned around at every corner, looked around, maybe seeing that it was some pony watching her or following her. But every single time, she couldn't see any pony. No. Maybe some ponies in the distance or some male ponies in the air, but nothing like any some no pony which is standing at the corner beeping on her or something. So she brushed it off with something was something important. But this feeling continued even when she was walking home from work, and the next day, and the next. This continued for about almost two weeks, when she decided that she had enough. So one time when she was looking around, and just looking at a newspaper, when she suddenly felt that some pony was looking at her, and she quickly turned around, and saw some pony running towards the end of the corner, and she ran up to the corner, but the pony was gone. It's like this pony had just vanished in middle air. It's like there was a ghost or something. She started imagining that she had been just imagining things happen. She thought maybe that she has been too tired from all the working at the store, and she thought maybe that she had been. Like a slave, maybe make her feel hallucinated. See, just, just thinking she had been feeling this. She had been followed and everything. She didn't bring this topic up to her assistants or even her boyfriend, Snowy Blue. So she did thought maybe if she could get a good night's sleep, maybe that would stop feeling. But it didn't. In fact, only two days after that, seems everything was back to normal. No feelings, different feelings, even from the work or after work. But after two days, it was back to normal. Back to, it was back to feeling. And this time, the gifts returned. And now, for this one morning, with this, a small box of chocolate with a letter. And it was used only a few sentences. And the sentence said, quote, I missed you, and I'd love to see you when you walk to, to work, how you can make this most beautiful clothing of the, every single fabric. I'd love to wait to see you soon. Your secret admirer. End quote. And now, Coco started to get feeling something was not like this was not like Snowy Blue's attention.
If he were leaving a, some sort of chocolate box to her, he would always be signed by his name or perhaps a nickname that she had been giving her, but never as a secret admirer. So she took the box, she took the letter, but instead of going to work at first, she actually went to his, to his work and even brought the letter and a few others that he had been giving for the past few weeks. And he was really surprised to see her. He asked why he was there suddenly, and he even was given this route of letters. And he started reading at least a few of them. And he then suddenly asked, And you think this I wrote this? And she just nodded and said, Yeah, haven't you? No, and you know I, I never signed as a secret admirer. I mean, always I would admit I would have signed my name or nickname, but never like this. But this is not like what I would should read or be writing. And I hadn't even sent you any gifts for all this time. Maybe the ones when we start dating, but but that was the only time I sent you gift. And I have been busy for most of the time, so I had never been a time to be sending you any gifts. Why did you do Brian? Why did you even brought this up to me earlier? If you did, maybe you'd be gonna find out who did this. And she was your fault. She explained that she thought he had been doing this all along, like to be sort of mysterious, maybe some just to be romantic one, I mean, like a romantic mysterious. And he explained that he thought maybe that he could do something like that, like that. But this was something he wouldn't do. So, who could have done this? And why? I have no idea, he said. But what should we do? Should we call it 40? I don't think that is not we can do. I mean, so far this pony we have been doing this hasn't been any harm or threatening you in any way. But then she mentioned about this that she might as feel felt she had been followed to work and even home from work. Wait, have you seen any pony doing this? I think I saw once, but I, when I followed up, this pony just vanished. Huh, never heard that of it before. But you should just stay more, more cautious next time. And if this and if this continues, tell me right away. I don't want you to be in any harm. Promise me that. And she did. So she went to work, and she didn't inform her staff about this. Just saying that she was just she went to see her boyfriend only for a moment, but she went back now. So of course, after a few weeks, things seemed to be going back to normal. But she still have felt the same feeling that some pony was falling on her when he's watching her from a distance. Because she could never see any pony or even hear that some pony was walking behind her. But every time she heard something, she always turned around, but there was some pony else, maybe an older person, or a pony, or perhaps a couple who was walking from a distance from the other direction. But this was really creepy to her. Everything is just back to back normal, like some this feeling and the gifts appeared now and then, but not almost like every often. But there was no letters anymore, just the gift under some box or chocolate or maybe a few flowers, but that was mostly it. But the point turned to a much deeper direction. Because Coco has getting enough of this. And even so had her boyfriend. Both decided maybe to cut this pony in the act. Because they had asked the neighbors if they had seen or heard many any ponies been doing this. And they even have went to the local florist in the area to ask if they have been sending flowers to her to her apartment over the time. But they said no. And they have never been getting any sort of uh, any orders to deliver. But they had asked if there some point had been bought this amount of flowers for about the past two months. But no point had from either of the stores. So the question, who didn't be doing this? 
And what purpose? So they decided to wait. So for next couple of days afterwards, Coco had her boyfriend sleep over. And they went, waited to wait to see if they could manage to cut this pony be doing this. And the patient would pay off. Because one early morning when when Snowy Blue and Coco was up, up almost like 5 in the morning, when they heard the sound of the door, they slowly walked in there. And they still heard the sound, but they slowly opened the door quickly, and they saw this pony. And it turned out to be her ex-boyfriend. He'd been doing all this, trying to win her back, to win her, her heart back. Snowy Blue was furious, and he said, Why have you done this? He said he angrily. You don't want to be around here anymore. You're not welcome. Leave. But his ex-boyfriend tried to explain that he wanted, that he wants Snow Coco back, and that they were meant to be with each other. But Coco said, I don't love you anymore. And all the gifts you sent me, the flowers, I never kept them. I threw them away. And the, got, and the candy, I gave it away. And it was true, she did. Because after that, she had this feeling that never find out that this roses. She never kept any of the kids. She threw them all the way. But then also about the necklace or jewelry she had been given. She managed to track down the, from which store they were bought. And she gave them back, but not pay for it. But now she realized her ex-boyfriend had been trying to trying to make her love her love him again. But she had enough. She told him to leave and never return. And he tried one more time to try to win her over. But now Snowy Blue was even more furious and it's like almost screaming. She said no. And she will never love you after what you did. So now please leave and then he closed the door in his face they couldn't hear that he was still outside for only about a few seconds before he left and that was the final thing and she heard from him Kogo was really happy that he was being there because if he had been there she had never known what had been how things would end up she was grateful that he was there and that she truly loved him for what he was protecting her because after all this happened, their relationship remained strong and happy. And even though only two months later, Snowy Blue actually proposed to Coco, realizing that they were meant to be with each other, and he loved her more than anything. And she said yes. They even went to get married in Poloneville, where both agreed. They even went to a small island nearby Manhattan for their honeymoon, and they had a great time there. Four years later, Coco told Snowy Blue that they were going to be parents soon, and he could never be happier. And a few weeks later, and a few months later, they had a baby girl. And five years later, they had a baby boy. And that's how Snowy Blue and Coco Pomel from the True Love got a big family. The end.